player 2 has joined the game. Hey yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to another two-player co-op quick hits edition. I'm one of your hosts here, Kevin, along with my brother from my mother, Sean. How are we doing? Fantastic. Today on the quick hits edition, we kind of want to get personal with y'all. See, keep it real. Yeah, so we've been doing audio podcasts now for about eight, nine months. I guess it's been since eight months. December. Beginning of December. Yeah, beginning of December, we did a Metal Gear Solid uh, spoiler cast. You can check that out on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Podcasts, all your favorite podcast services around the globe. Um, and we realized, even if you've been with us from the beginning, you probably don't know that much about us. Um, we, we got into it just a, really a, a tiny bit. Um, in our opening for that spoiler cast. And we've talked about it here and there along the way, uh, what our upbringing was, why we like video games, all that kind of stuff. We want to say, okay, we're on YouTube now. Let's take a step back. Reboot. Yeah, and we just kind of want to go through and just basically tell you why. Who we are, yeah. why we're doing this. Why are we here? Just to suffer? No, Kaz. We're here to do a video podcast or something. Um. So I don't really know where we're going to go with this. I don't know how long it's going to be, but let's just enjoy the ride and you can get to know us a little bit. Just a, a free flowing conversation that occasionally touches on mature subjects. Bill Simmons. I was going to say, is that a conversation with Colin or is that That's yeah, Bill Simmons? That's Bill Simmons. So, I mean, the first reason that we're doing this, that we're trying to do something on YouTube with videos and with audio podcasts and all this other different stuff is just because obviously we love video games. If we didn't love video games, we wouldn't be here. I have loved video games ever since. And dad, if you're watching, keep me honest. I don't remember the first time I played it, but ever since I laid hands on the Intellivision, um, our dad had an Intellivision before we ever had an NES. We never had an Atari in our house. We had an Intellivision. And I can remember three, four years old, maybe, um, Dad, you know, our dad played it and stuff. Uh, but I can remember one thing that, that first got me into video games, and that's a game called Night Stalker, which is not that I would probably argue with anybody about it, but if you want to argue about what the best game ever on the Intellivision is, I would say without a doubt it's... It's got to be up there. It's it's Night Stalker. I mean, there was Lock and Chase. There was... What were some of the other games? Uh, uh, what was the one from Bernardo? Shark Shark? Did we have that? No, I've never uh, heard of it, but... Those are the only two that I really remember playing are Night Stalker, Lock and Chase. And I can remember the box art like it was yesterday. Um, it was all like cardboard box art. I can remember, if you've never seen the Intellivision controller, look it up. It is a basically a TV remote control with a circular disc thing at the bottom. And... It, the numbers you just had one through nine, like you would like on your cell phone or a, a cordless phone. If any of y'all even remember cordless phones, anything like that. Um, and for each game, you would slide a different plastic insert over the numbers, and that would tell you what each button did. It was actually it was a pretty ingenious. very smart idea. Yeah. Um, didn't have a D pad, but the circular pad kind of took the place of the D pad. Um, and that's that's my earliest memory of a video game is the Intellivision. I, I can still, like we talked about, you can go look up our episode on uh, Games of Christmas Past. We might do a sequel to that this Christmas. But um, in there we talk about when we got our NES, Christmas 87. Um, it, I, I remember walking out. Sean was freaking three years old. I was seven. No, six. I was six. Six. Wait. Six. Yeah, I said you were three. Okay, I'm like, wait, I'm three years older. That doesn't, that's math. Math is hard. I minored in math. I don't know what's going on. Uh, but I can remember walking out and seeing that sitting on the table with The Legend of Zelda and Super Mario, and I think we probably got golf with it too then. I love that game. So, but my earliest memory is is definitely the Intellivision. What's what's yours? Do you remember the Intellivision before the Nintendo? Or it, do you just remember the, the, the NES? It's tough because... I don't remember if I've talked about this, it would have been on games of Christmas past episode two, but I've talked about this amongst family and friends many times, but I don't know if this is just me or if other people have can relate, but I feel like almost every single one of my memories as a child is only a memory because we have it on video. Yeah. Like we got our 
or my parents got their camcorder end of 1989. So I was five. The big like TV style. Yeah, over the shoulder. Yeah. yeah. There's no reason that I shouldn't have memories before I was five. That's ridiculous. Well, and I remember, I remember preschool, but Christmas and stuff. I don't remember Christmases before 89 because that was the first one we had recorded. Um, I certainly remember playing Nintendo and playing Mario and Zelda long before we got Contra and Bases Loaded 89. in 1989. Um, I remember playing television, but I don't know that I played it before I played Nintendo. If we got right. the Nintendo when I was three, I probably didn't play in television first. Yeah. Nintendo was probably my first gaming experience. Um, yeah. And I remember playing Mario and trying to get mom to play Mario and she died at the first Goomba. Every time. Um, but boy, when we plugged in Tetris, woo oh, boy. she whooped our butts. And she still could to this day. She could. So yeah, um, that's that's my first, I guess, memory. They're all a little fuzzy before 1989. Um, and I, I very much remember in television, but I think I almost remember playing it as just... I, I can remember after we had the NES, it kind of went into the closet. But every once in a while, we'd be like, Dad, let's play, right. let's play the Intellivision. It was and almost... we pull it out, hook it up, and I was like, this thing is awesome, but insane at the same time. Like, I, I, this... Like, I remember it's almost... just amazing. I remember it being almost the same experience of today, going back and playing a Genesis or Super Nintendo or regular Nintendo. Like, when I remember playing Intellivision, I don't remember thinking of it as just being the previous generation it was almost like it was an alien piece of hardware like what is this this is so old but it really wasn't it was i mean it was probably the controller but no i I can only remember playing in television in a really retro style fashion i guess yeah so and then you move on through our lives we were sega kids which you you probably know if you listen to our sonic mania podcast a couple episodes ago or different other we, we did a whole podcast on growing up as a genesis kid versus a super nintendo kid but so we we had all the sega system we had genesis we had saturn we had 32x we had nomad we had everything except the sega cd up and we had the game gear up until and the nomad dreamcast yeah i said nomad i think okay. I said nomad. um so some people would say, oh, you poor, you poor, poor things. You, you were Sega kids. We loved it. And yep. I, I understand the Saturn's not as good as the PS1 now. But at the time, I mean, we had a lot of fun with it. We had really great games. Um, oh, I played I, the crap out of that. Yeah, we, we absolutely loved it. But then so at the end of that, uh, I graduated college in 99. I mean, I graduated high school in 99. I'm trying to make myself older than I am. Damn, I'd be almost 40. Graduated high school in 99, went on to college, didn't bring a system with me, and I had kind of started to get out of gaming at that point. Um, if you've ever heard me talk about Metal Gear Solid, you'll know, I think I didn't play it. It was either, it was 99 or 2000 when I finally played it on PC, and I got back into video games. In that time, though, Sean had gotten an N64, Ocarina of Time came out, um, so he had a whole different experience. Once we got past the Saturn, and we kind of went our separate ways in life, we both had different experiences with with video games from them on from then on until sean moved down here to to the memphis area and i'll get to that here in a, in a little bit but um yeah i mean I, I took a break from the saturn until i got to to play metal gear solid then i got my playstation 2 a couple years later i played metal gear solid 2 and then the rest is history um but I mean, what what were you doing around that time? Like I said, I know you had the N sixty four. I would come home. We we would play the N sixty four. We play all the wrestling games. They were the most fun. Still to this day, some of the most fun. No mercy. Video games ever. I, I mean, and even Revenge 2000. and two thousand were yep. just phenomenally fun games. Which no wrestling game to this day. The Has three best wrestling games to. ever made are those three. Are in order. No mercy two thousand and WCW NWO Revenge. I mean, it's just. I don't think there's really any argument to that. And I hate it because I know I'm going to buy 2K17 when it comes out because they finally put Goldberg, Goldberg back in there and the kids want to play it. But it, I think if I were to go back and play No Mercy now, it would almost be depressing. Oh, I, I looked up videos of it. Something made me think of it probably a week or two ago, and I just YouTubed it. And it looks worse than I remembered, but oh yeah, I, I it made me still just want to play the game so bad. It was wrestling perfection yep um so yeah so so we, we yeah, talked so, about so what was i doing around that time yeah 
Um, so yeah, you had. Did I? I got the N sixty four. I think you said you got it the year that Ocarina came out, which was what ninety eight. Yeah. So you weren't gone yet. No, I was there for a full year, and I can remember watching you play Ocarina. I can remember getting yeah. jumping through the paintings and stuff. But yeah. I'm like, so. Yeah, that's around the time we went our separate ways. He went off to college. I was still in high school for a few more years. Um, I then 64 for a while. I eventually got a PS2, and that kind of got me through college. Um, oh, and the Wii. I got a Wii. Um, I think the year it came out, Mom... Thank you, Mom. She went and stood in line at she Walmart me, or something. She told me she was going to stay in line. I'm like, for this stupid wheat? What the heck is a wheat? Like, do you, can you remember when that got announced? It was like, they're calling this the wheat? I thought it was the stupidest name. It was name, the worst but now name ever. Just, and now it's the wheat. You wouldn't. Now you just, it, it couldn't make sense. Else. It's the wheat. What was it originally called? What? The Revolution? I mean, maybe it was never uh, called that, but it was like the code name, whatever. Was it the Revolution? Like what the 64 was the, was the, the dolphin, dolphin and... I can't remember any of the others. But, oh, gosh. Which um, was the revolution? I almost want to say the GameCube was the revolution. No, I think it was Wii. Don't because it had a name before it was Wii. And Go ahead was, and keep talking. Because um, I just, I really don't remember. I think it was the Wii. Um, and that was pretty much it. It was Wii and PS2 that kind of got me through college. Yep, you're right. Revolution. Uh, um, I didn't get... So, when I first moved to Connecticut after I graduated college is when I finally got a PS3. Best Buy had a deal. So I needed a new TV. Best Buy had a deal where it was like, buy a TV and get a Blu-ray player for free. Oh, yeah, that's right. And I right. said, does that include PS3? And they're like, uh... Whatever. Yeah. So I got a free okay, PS3. Okay, before you change your mind, let me, let me yeah. jump on this. So I got a PS3. I never had too many. I think I peaked at maybe like 10 to 12 games for it. Um, and I played it, and it was fun. But I don't remember having any, like... Uh, must have I mean GTA 4 um, Metal Gear Solid 4 both in hindsight disappointing games but see the funny thing for me is at the time Metal Gear Solid 4 was my most anticipated game of all time um, and at the time I loved it I I don't know that I'll ever actually play through it again I, if, if I ever actually thought about playing it again I'd probably just go to YouTube and watch the cutscenes right yeah. um, but I missed the launch of Metal Gear Solid 4 in June of 2008, because we went up to Watertown to visit the family in the summer. Yeah. And I had pre-ordered it. So it was sitting at GameStop for like a week after it came out. And I, I remember calling them a couple times being like, you're not going to sell it right. You're not going to sell it. Like, I reserve this. You're still going to have my copy right. And I, because I did the limited edition, came with the making of DVD or yeah. whatever in the cool box. Um, but I was so worried they were going to sell it. And I remember when I got home, I was like, okay, here we go. Let's go. June 22nd, 2008, I want to say. It's either the 22nd or the 12th was the release date. Um, but, yeah, and then I got my PS3. I never had too many games. Um, I honestly spent a lot of my time on PS3 playing. Um, I downloaded Final Fantasy VII. I downloaded Symphony of the Night. Um, probably a couple other games that I'm forgetting. I went back, plugged my PS2 back in, and played a lot of like the Mega Man Anniversary. I played through Final Fantasy X again, twelve. I just I wasn't getting new games, um, and then that was it. I never stopped playing games, but I stopped really playing new games. Um, and then so a year and a half ago, a little over that, so two Christmases ago. Uh, Kevin convinced me to ask for a PS4 for Christmas. I got it. And now I think that was kind of the beginning of my I'm a I'm a born again video game mm-hmm. player. Still not, you know, crazy, but You're a, a born a gamer. Yeah. Um copyright, don't you steal that. And so, you know, I played GTA 5, The Last of Us, Metal Gear Solid 5, all sorts of games now and especially having moved down here with Kevin and the rest of the family and obviously doing this podcast has kind of reinvigorated me towards uh video games um I would say I never really stopped playing but there's a period there where I, I kind of lost my way but in the end I mean video games to me 
probably nobody but video gamers listening. But if there is non-gamers listening, you'll probably laugh at this. But video games are the only thing that I've done basically my whole life. I've had other hobbies and interests that come and go, whatever. But I never really stopped playing video games. And there's not a single other thing I could say that about in my life. And again, that's that's part of the reason why we're here and doing this today. Yeah, so... Kind of the same thing with me. I've been playing video games now for, for 30 years, basically. Um, but it, so that's our history on, you know, games and, you know, throughout the years and stuff like that. But why do I love video games? To me, video games grew up as I grew up. Like when it was just Mario and Zelda and, and stuff like that and the Nintendo and even through the Genesis storyline wasn't important. I wanted games that were fun to play, that looked nice, that were the right difficulty, you know, not too difficult, not just, you know, like ghosts and goblins and stuff like that. Um, but they were just fun. But then when I fell out, it's because I was growing up and then this game came along metal gear solid and storytelling to me became so important. Yep. And that's what it is to me now still. Like I would love to go play shovel Knight or bro talk about bro force. You, there's no story there. There's you're, you're just killing terrorists and, and aliens and devils and stuff. Um, so I still love that. But what I love about video games is that they really are an art form. Yep. hundred percent. Like you can do so much, especially over last of us was 15 hour game or something like that. I beat uncharted in 15 hours. You can do so much more storytelling over 15 to 20 to sometimes a hundred hours like metal gear. Um, than you can in just a two hour movie. And it's not only that it's just good storytelling, but it's, it's interactive. Movies are not, books I would say are even more interactive than movies because you are just looking at words on a page and you have to come up with stuff. Especially movies, those choose your own adventure books. Those are so all good. Movies, they're just, they're, they're throwing stuff at you. They're telling you what the story is. They're giving you the visuals you have to see and you cannot do anything with them. It's very passive. Video games are not passive. Video games are like, like Rufus always says, I hope this is a, a dialogue, not a monologue. Video games are a dialogue between you and the game or you and actually the creator of that video game. And that's why I love them because it's so interactive. It's such a great way um, to tell stories and stuff. And that's why I still care about video games like I do and why I wanted to do something like this. So, I mean, does that does that kind of jive with you or you, why do you love video games? I mean, you literally, you took the words out of my mouth. You took the notes off of my <laughs> iPhone. Off your paper. <laughs> um, it's all about storytelling for me. Um, I didn't. I don't think as a kid I really appreciated the Zelda story. It was just a no. fun game. Um, but as I've grown and matured, and video games have too, it's really all about the story. Um, I was looking back at our episode three, our top ten or so video games. My top ten, StarCraft. Okay, this is in order, 10 to 1. StarCraft, okay. Link to the Past, story. Metal Gear Solid 3, story. Mario 3, it's just a great game. It's just you don't need a good story. It's perfect. Yep. Chrono Trigger, Grand Theft Auto 5, a little bit of both. I mean, great story, but also just phenomenal gameplay. Uh, Final Fantasy 10, Metal Gear Solid 5, Final Fantasy 7, Ocarina of Time. The common theme there, for the most part, is just fantastic stories. Um, and like you said, video games are, you can tell a story in a video game much better than you can in a movie. You can make the argument, you could do a similar thing in a TV show, but to tell a really good story, the full story, you need more than two and a half, three hours that a movie will give you. Um, TV shows to some extent, but I mean, you talk about how you're hoping the next Batman movie is like an Arkham Asylum kind of movie. That would be cool, but they're not going to tell that story the way That's the video game. That's a lot to cram into it two can't. and a half hours, right? As much as, I mean, what was the last good movie adaptation of a video game? I literally can't think of one. Some had their merits. Mortal Kombat in '95, maybe, but. They're just, it doesn't work. It's not, right. it, it doesn't work in that form. Um, as much as I would love to see a Zelda movie 
or when I heard there's the rumor yeah. about the Zelda Netflix show. That I'm almost might glad work, it but didn't. Ha- in if the TV it was going to work, it would it's be not going to work. Show, as a movie. Yeah, it can't work in just two hour movie because there's you, you lose what Zelda is. There's not gonna, there's not going to be boss fights and everything like this. It's just going to be Ganon captures Zelda or the Triforce and you go right to Ganon. Oh, right, you can't do it. Um, and I don't know, like you said. There's something about the interactivity. It's not just you watching something play out i mean metal gear has its fair share of cutscenes and stuff but it's still i mean it's interactive and the end result is going to be the same no matter what i get that but there's something about leading in this case venom snake leading your character right through the story through his journey the yep. emotional attachment you make in a good game the emotional attachment you make with the character um even something as simple as firewatch no action. That is literally just a story that you are watching unfold f- for the most part through the first person perspective of Hank. Um, you would almost not call that a video game. It's just it's just a good story in the video game form. Um, I think going back to Zelda, the reason that has always clicked with me. Anybody who's a Zelda fan or even a Nintendo fan knows that Miyamoto was um, inspired by his childhood and yeah. exploring caves sense and sense of such. adventure, yep. I mean, that was us. That was us. That's all we did. As we, kids, we, went, we, had, we played we had in the, the creek, creek next to our house. We had the sand house. dunes up by Randy's house. Yep. We had our, we had our fort down yep. by the river. We had the biggest rock I've ever seen in my life. I still, that yep. thing was, how, how did that, I don't know, it's awesome. We had a creepy tunnel that went under the road that I think I went from one side to the other I could probably count on one hand the number of times. It was only like 50 feet long, but it always scared the crap out of me. Yeah. And something about that. I mean, I could, I can relate to what Miyamoto was trying to accomplish. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I guess really when it comes down to it, it's, it's really all about the storytelling and video games can do it in a way that movies and TV shows and books can't. Yep. So, if I think about it, I've probably always in some form or fashion wanted to get into video games somehow. Like I got my degree in computer science. Was I ever probably thinking I was going to program video games or something like that? Probably not. But uh, like one of the, the fun things I actually did in college and computer science was difficult, at least at, at where I went to school. Cause it was a lot of the professors didn't really speak English and they just, some of them seemed like they wanted you to fail, but we did a robotics class where we got to actually make like these little robots and we programmed what they were going to do. And then you had them do it and stuff. And that was so cool. So that was almost like very on a very small scale creating like a character in a video game, yep. but I've always wanted to get in them somehow. So that's why a few years ago, I guess it was two years ago now, um, I found this website, whatculture.com, and they're they're fine. They're they're basically just a list website. They're uh, knockoff BuzzFeed, I guess you would say. They do um, movies, games, wrestling, sports, comics, all kinds of stuff, and it's all list based, really. Um, and they said, hey, you can write. Anybody want to write for us? Uh, put an application, give us a submission, and I mean, basically, I think they approved anybody. But I wrote two articles for them on video games. One was. Uh, ranking the Metal Gear Solid franchise at that time. And then the other one was eight things to be concerned about for Metal Gear Solid 5. And my number one concern was in case Snake isn't really Big Boss, which is funny looking back. Um, so I, I'm, But that didn't stick. I'm like, I, I like writing, but I don't know if I'm that good. I did get, I think it was 21,000 page views on the Metal Gear Solid 5 thing, um, which was kind of cool, but I just, I just stopped because... It's hard to come up... Writing is tough. Like, to come up with stuff you want to write. If somebody would just tell me, okay, I want you to do this about Metal Gear, write this about Zelda, tell me what you think the NX is going to be, that's that's fine. But if you're just trying to come up with these lists and ranking and all this other stuff, it's it's tough. Um, So I only did a couple articles there, but I'm like, I want to do something in video games. And then as... It was like right in front of me this whole time, when I'm watching all these people on YouTube doing different Let's Plays or doing you know, news shows and podcasts and all this other stuff. But uh, all my buddies down here, all my fantasy football guys and Rasan and, and Jim and all them, I mean, they don't really play video games like at all. Um, 
we got a lot in common. We we get together and we watch sports and we play sports and we we drink and we do all this other stuff. But nobody, none of them really care about video games. So I didn't really have a chance to do anything with them. Then when it finally turned out that Sean was moving down here, yeah, I convinced him to get a PlayStation. Um, the Christmas before, actually, convinced it was two Christmases ago. Yeah, yeah. convinced him the, the Christmas before you moved down. So you had your PS4 right. when you moved down. Convinced him to get one. Um, we would play GTA Online and stuff like that. And we had a blast and. I don't remember how it even happened, how we started this. I know we were out eating pizza. We were at Mellow Mushroom, uh, the four of us, us and our respective uh, woman folk, um, his wife, Jess, and my fiance Brittany. And that's about all. I don't remember how it came up. The beer was flowing, and we, uh, it was basically just a... Oh, yeah, you know, we should we should do our own podcast. You said it. Like, we were sitting there drinking, and you said it. Yeah, we should we should do our own podcast, and then we just kind of... And I just looked at him, and I was like, I've been wanting wait. to say that this whole yeah. time. Seriously? And then we sat there on the pizza box, which we I threw out the pizza box. We covered the whole but, top of a pizza box with various, usually horrible, punny podcast names. We knew exactly what we wanted to do. We spent probably a week trying to come up with just a name. Um, maybe another week trying to come up with a format, which we've all but bailed on at this point it's more just i mean we have a topic but yep and i'm sure it'll continue to evolve and oh yeah i know we want to do more like retro centric topics and stuff like that but we'll you know we started out with spoiler cast and then we had you know old like five minute reviews of old genesis or super nintendo games and then we tried different games we play at the end and all kinds of stuff but either way it was the two of us and the other thing i like not to get all sappy and stuff but it's two hours a week Sometimes more if we've got audio issues and camera issues that you you deal with when you don't have a, a full time producer or, or expensive equipment and stuff. Um, but it's like one to two hours a week for me and my brother to sit down and just hang out, yep. which is awesome. Which I never, when I moved down here and you're up in Connecticut, I didn't think we'd ever have that chance. But you're here now and it's good, and I don't want to get all sappy and cry or anything. But um, so yeah, so we're we're talking. We come up with the ideas and stuff. Mom's gonna shed a tear when she listens she will. to this episode. Um. And then the funny thing is when we sat down to do our first episode, we both bought our microphones. I had a different microphone to start. I, I swapped out microphones. So I'm glad I did because the sound quality on this one's really good. Sean's had this microphone. If you would have seen us at that time, like he didn't have a stand. We put a box up because the, the microphone came with a little tripod thing. And we he would set up a box. And he's six foot three or four or something. I'm five foot ten. I'm a little guy. Uh, you can't tell with us sitting down. so I like sitting down. But he would. He had like a box of like I don't even know what like a, a kid's it was toy one of these box. Chairs or oh something. yeah, he had one of the kids' little chairs up on the table with his microphone on that, and I was like, this is this is hilarious. When I watch like Podcast Beyond and Colin and Greg and all these, and that's the other thing. That's what really inspired me was when you hear guys like the kind of funny guys talking to the community and stuff, and Podcast Beyond guys and stuff like that, just saying, follow your dream. Like, just make something you want to make. Don't get in it to try to have a job or make money or anything like that. If you love something, go out and do it. And that's really, I guess I probably should have said that earlier, but that's at the heart of this is like... That's why we're doing this. That's why we're doing this. It's fun. We, we love video games. It's fun to do. We've learned a lot. Video editing sucks. I've learned that. Uh, it's confusing to use USB microphones into a computer because you got to do an aggregate device because it, it only can take one... It only thinks of it as one input. I never knew that. We. That's what I was going to say. When we sat down to do the first podcast, we plug it in. I'm like, only my one microphone was working. We're like, well, crap. So we spent like another hour out here trying to figure it out. We figured out how to do an aggregate device. This is how the sausage get made, but that's what this episode is. Because um, we can't, I mean, we could afford, but we're not going to go spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on, you know, super nice, sure microphones and high quality USB mixers and a 4K camera and all this. Like maybe someday we'll get to that. I don't know, but we figured it out. And yeah, I mean, I don't know where I was going with it, but I mean, yeah, bottom line is we're very small scale. Um, what you see here looks, yeah, I mean, more professional than the rest of this room. Um, and a lot more professional, <laughs> we'll, we'll give a tour sometime, <laughs> a lot more professional than we were those first couple episodes. Um, like he said, we were cheap. I mean, well, I still have the same microphone, but cheap microphones on, kids chairs stacked on top of a table and multiple trials and errors with 
Kevin's scripts. crappy MacBook, which we eventually switched out for Jess's because it works better. It's still an old crappy MacBook, but it works better. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're zero, but I mean, we haven't made a dime doing this. Nope. We, I mean, not that we've spent a lot of money, but I mean, it's, it's been all our money. It's not like we're not doing this for a living. We're doing it as a hobby. We're doing it because it's fun. We're doing it mostly for us but also hoping that some people out there will watch and get some enjoyment out of it and remind me to touch on that yeah i mean maybe someday we grow and get bigger but i mean we're we're very much small scale we have no we have dreams of getting bigger but certainly no plan i mean delusions of grandeur is a delusion it's delusions delusions yeah but yeah i mean we we're recording on GarageBand on an old MacBook Pro. We are recording this on a Sony Handycam, uh, editing on iMovie. I mean, all free software. We used Audacity for a while. We eventually switched to By the way, GarageBand. a lot of people like Audacity. I don't know if it's just bad on Macs or what, but we did not I, like it. The, I, the sound quality is so much better on GarageBand, but yeah, right. anyways, that's what it is. Um, I mean, we paid somebody, I think ten dollars i'd love to give her a shout out i don't remember her name right now for our on caricatures Fiverr. for yeah. the logo um john bernardo john bernardo nice to, to give us some theme music which shout we absolutely out to john love. thank you so much a link uh, to our past podcast podcast check it out we'll probably uh, try to get him on here too we're gonna go on his we'll be on his show at some but. point um but yeah all very very small scale um the video which hopefully we'll you've seen by now that is on the beginning of this episode it if we can get be. it on there it should be was made in powerpoint very very small scale we at least for what we're doing now we know what we're doing but when we started we had no clue and there's still so much to learn but we hope to continue to grow and get better at what we're doing and i mean probably in the next coming weeks maybe we're at plan to start doing let's plays so we'll add that to our uh repertoire yep and and so that's and the other thing i want to touch on is when we started this one of the things i wanted to do was i wanted to keep it clean if you know me anybody who's watching this knows me you know i don't have the cleanest mouth in the world but what i hear i love listening to colin greg and podcast beyond and stuff like that but even me, when it, get, it gets to the point where every other word is an F bomb or bomb or a GD or this or that, I'm like, come on, guys. Like, you, especially like I've seen and no, do your own thing. I'm not throwing stones or anything, but when I've watched some Let's Plays that like Colin has done, where they, they did a, a quick, they, they did some old Let's Plays maybe six months ago where Colin was playing like Mega Man 2 and Castlevania 1 and, uh, oh gosh, what else? Ninja Gaiden and all these old games that, I'm like, this would be so cool to show my boys these old games and this guy play them who's really good at them. But I can't because he can't hear that. And even like uh, the completionist on Twitter who's really good, Gerard the completionist, he just completes games and he reviews them and stuff and he does a great job. He's got a Let's Play channel where I finally looked it up one time and they were doing like Super Mario Maker levels. And I can understand Super Mario Maker can be very frustrating. But this is a guy who never cusses in his reviews or, and stuff. If he does say a bad word, he he bleeps it out. F this, F that. Throughout the whole thing, I'm like, oh, God, this would be another one that Noah would love to see, these hard levels and these guys failing and all this other stuff. It would be fun to do. I can't show it. So we want to keep it clean from the beginning. We want to have something that, you know, is family-friendly. Will I mess up every once in a while? We have the occasional yeah. slip-up. And I don't know how to bleep stuff Mostly out. That I, right. that one, that's one thing I haven't figured out. If you know how to do that in GarageBand, uh, comment below. Let me know because I don't know how to do it. But want to keep it family friendly and like sean was saying we're going to do let's plays we're going to do bro force and stuff like that so you know that's not something that's appropriate for children but we want to to do a whole series when the the classic nes comes out and go through all those games those are all games that kids will love and adults too and i don't want you know you're not going to hear us dropping f-bombs and stuff like that throughout the whole thing because that's not what we what we want to be um another thing like sean was saying uh I don't even remember what you said if you said building a community or that's just what I was thinking of. But um, so, yeah, like we said, we love doing this because we love getting together and just talking video games. But we do want to form some kind of a community with y'all out there in YouTube or if you listen to us on SoundCloud or any other audio podcast services. We want to interact with you. Um, we love talking about games and we want to talk 
to you about games. Like I was saying, like my buddies and stuff, other than Sean, they're not really into video games anymore. Um, but now the world is really so small with the internet and social media and all this stuff that it's so easy to meet people. John Bernardo's from uh, Ontario, I think. Toronto. Yeah. I, he's uh, 3,000 miles away from here probably, 22,000 maybe, something like that. But we interact. He gave us music, and now we're using it. It's just cool. We're going to go on his podcast. He'll probably come on ours. It's awesome. So we want to interact with you. We want to also, I would say, and you can add in on this too, we're a different kind of a voice. We're not insiders, professionals, or anything like that. We're not in the industry. I, I work in IT at a company here in Memphis. Sean's an engineer. We just love video games. So we kind of want to bring a different perspective. Um, we're not going to know any leaks. We're not going to get any... We don't have sources. Well, we may never get a, an advanced <laughs> review copy of a video game or something like that. But we're okay with that because that's that's not what we are. That's we're we're we just do. we're just two dudes that love video games. We like drinking, and we do like drinking. We like doing this, so we want to interact with you, um, whoever you are watching this. Subscribe, share this with your friends, and everything, and 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 let's let's build a community together. But I'll, I'll let Sean uh, I'll let Sean take it from there. So to touch on something he said, um, I do think. I'm not just saying this. I think that the with the the internet the way it is today, the video game community is the best community out there, if you ask me. Um, very tight knit, very passionate. Um, we consider ourselves a part of it, a very small part of it, and yeah, we'd like to be a bigger part of it, but. We love hearing from all of you out there, um, people that have helped get the word out about us, um, people that have contributed, again, like John Bernardo, shout out, uh, helping us out with some new music. We love it. Anything we can do to pay it back or pay it forward, we're more than willing to do what we can. Um, we love being part of this community on an even smaller scale, the kind of funny community. Top notch. Um, I know we've been posting on their forums quite a bit, but that's how we met John Bernardo. Yep. We love getting all the feedback we've gotten. Um, such a cool group of people and very, uh, very helpful. And again, passionate. We love all you guys. We're, we're glad to be a part of the community as small a part as that may be. And yeah, we love what we're doing. And like I said, it's, it's not our job. We both have full-time jobs. This is, a hobby we're recording this on a wednesday night we both gotta go to work in the morning we'll record again probably sunday night going to work again monday morning this guy spends hours a week post-processing the audio and the video again we're not making a dime off this someday okay maybe who knows but if if bullet bourbon would like to sponsor us and just send us bourbon we'll we'll take that to we, start we would we shout would out to you greatly bourbon. appreciate I, I'll, that i'll tweet that at Tweet that at bullet. Tweet that. Um, but yeah, very small scale. We probably will be for the foreseeable future, and that's fine with us. We are what we are, but yeah, the more we'd love to hear from you guys. Um, we don't want to just feel like we're talking to a camera. We know there's people watching, not a huge number of people, but we see the views. People are watching, and, and we appreciate every single one. Every single one. Believe us, we, we check it every day and see how many views, how many listens we're at. We love watching that counter go up. Um, so, yeah, if you want to talk to us, talk to us. Leave us a comment. Tweet us on Twitter. I'm not going to give the whole spiel about our handles because he does it better than I do, but you'll find out at the end of the video where to find us. We'd love to hear from you, and thank you. Not that we're signing off, but thank you for playing us. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we usually sign off. I think we're probably pretty close, but yeah, you can find us on Twitter. Uh, I'm at Kevin white 24. He's at real Sean white together. We are at two player underscore co-op. Uh, you can find us on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google podcasts, all that other stuff. And you can find us here. Obviously, if you're watching this, you found us on YouTube. If this is the first time you found us and you've liked this video and everything we've talked about, give the video a like and hit subscribe over here or something like that. Share I'm not, with your friends. I'm not annotating. Family. I'm not annotating anything yet because that's that's just too much work. I'll figure that out sometime. But yeah, I mean, I hope I, I think we pretty much we covered everything I wanted to cover. I think I hit my my list of notes. So that's who we are. We're a two player co-op. 
And now you know who we are, where we come from. I hope you know why we're doing this and what we're hoping to accomplish. And yeah, like Sean said, tweet at us. Um, give us some feedback, comment below. Let us know any of your, I, 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 I sound like Jeremy Johns, who's another great YouTuber. That's always it. Comment below, let me know. And I feel like I'm copying him, but it just, it rhymes. I'm not trying to copy him, but comment below and let us know what you think about the video. Uh, any ideas, if you've got any ideas for, for podcast topics, um, anything you'd like to hear us talk about now that you know what our background is, if you, if there's anything from the past that you want to know more about and you think we've got some insight on, let us know. We'd, we'd love to hear it and you know, we'll take it in consideration for, for future topics. Absolutely. I think that's it for today. This has been a two player co-op quick hits edition. I think I'll probably title it like, who are we? Why are we here? Why are we doing this? Why? Are, why? Just why? Just, just title it. Why? Question mark, question mark. Why? Hey, we appreciate all y'all for, uh, for watching, listening, and uh, taking some time to sit with us today. So uh, until the next time, though, hey, Sean, why don't you go ahead and take us out? Honestly, truly, thank you for playing. Thank you. <laughs>